Hi everyone, this is Stephanie, and today I'm going to teach you how to sew a small tote inspired by Firoshiki, the Japanese craft of fabric wrapping. This bag features tied handles, and it's the perfect size to carry a bento box or serve as a small project bag. So this pattern was a free pattern from Koka Fabric, a Japanese fabric company, and it was designed by Ayumi Toda. I'm going to link in the description below where you can find the pattern and instructions. So let's get started by going over the materials that you'll need for this project. So first you'll need your pattern and I've already gone ahead and digitally drafted that for you if you're part of the class. If not, then you'll need to go ahead and draft it as the instructions say. All of the dimensions are given in the instructions for how to do that. So I did make one minor change to the pattern, which is I changed the handle um, the handle ties pattern piece. So instead of cutting it out of one really long strip of fabric, you can cut it um, out of a slightly shorter piece of fabric and then it gets seamed together. So I've done that so that I can squeeze my pattern piece onto a smaller piece of fabric and also so that if you're working with a directional print, you don't have the design of your of your fabric look upside down on one of the straps. So for your handles, you'll need half a yard to three quarters of a yard, depending on which direction you place your pattern piece. And you're gonna need half a yard for the main body of the bag, and then one full yard of fabric for your lining. And then I also have half a yard of fusible fleece interfacing. For hardware, you can also attach some magnetic snaps um, or some sew-on snaps. But that's optional, you could choose just to have only the tie closure. So here is my pattern piece for my handles, and you can either line up the grain line with the selvage edge, and cutting it that way will use about three quarters of a yard. However, um, if you place it on the crosswise grain line across the width of the fabric, you only need about half a yard of fabric. Um, and you'll probably need to flip it around um, and then cut one piece in one direction and then turn it the other direction and cut your other piece um, so that you can um, fit it most economically if you're trying to squeeze it into half a yard. But I have this nice long skinny strip of scrap left over so it should be perfect to cut it lengthwise. So using pattern piece A I'm going to cut two out of my handle fabric and I have my my fabric doubled up here so I'm cutting through two layers. So this linen fabric is going to make up the main body of my bag. You're going to want to place it along the fold line of your fabric, so make sure you fold your fabric um, in half somewhere, either along the crosswise grain line like I've done here, um, or fold it um, lengthwise so it's selvage to selvage. It doesn't really matter, um, you just need to have a fold line so that you can cut your pattern piece on the fold. So then using pattern piece B, I will cut out one on the fold using my exterior bag fabric. Now I'll cut out my lining. So I'm using that same pattern piece B and I'm placing it on the fold of my lining. Um, and I'll cut out one of those on the fold. Then pattern piece A needs to go on the lining as well and we'll cut out two from the lining fabric. And last, 
place your pocket on here somewhere um, and we'll cut two of the pocket piece as well. So make sure you place everything in a way where you can fit all your pattern pieces, then go ahead and cut everything out. I should note here, I also deviated from the pattern a little bit and I just cut out two of the pocket pieces and I'm gonna stitch them together to create my pocket. Um, the original pattern has you just sort of hem the pocket, which is totally fine. Um, I just decided to do it a little bit different. So the last thing I need to do is take my fusible fleece, fold it, and cut out one of pattern piece B on the fold. I'm just gonna give my um, the main body of my lining uh, a nice press and then we're gonna fuse the fusible fleece to it. So make sure you have the scratchy glue side facing the wrong side of your lining fabric. So that's the scratchy side and this is the wrong side of my lining. Um, my fabric doesn't really have a wrong side or right side, but if you do, that really matters. Um, then I'm going to take a press cloth which is just a scrap of fabric. Um, if you don't have a press cloth, you can just flip it over and and uh, iron from the other side, from the lining side. So first I just kind of quickly glide all over um, to gently fuse it, and then I will place my iron in one corner, hold it there for 10 seconds, lift it up, move it to the next spot, um, and hold it for another 10 seconds and do that until I've covered the entire piece and the whole thing is nicely fused. I'm going to start by making my pocket piece. So I'm marking a two inch area to leave unstitched. Then take your two pocket pieces and pin them so they are right sides together. So the wrong side of the fabric is facing out. And um, we're going to stitch this all the way around at three eighths of an inch, leaving that small area unstitched. So I'll start stitching just past one of those marks and do a couple of back stitches. Then I'm going to stitch towards the corner. And when I get to 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge, I will pivot with my needle down in the fabric. And I'll keep doing that all the way around until I got to the other mark. Then you just want to clip the corners of your seam allowance. Now I want to place the pocket, so I'm going to take my interfaced piece, my lining piece, and I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise so that I can find the center point. And the short edge here that I'm looking at um, at the top of the screen is the top of the bag. So I'm also going to fold just and finger press the pocket piece in half um, so I can line up the center that way. And then I'm going to um, have it be about an inch and a half from that top edge of the bag. Um, somewhere between an inch and a half and two inches should be good. Now it's important that you have the little gap right on the bottom of the pocket so that it will get stitched closed when we attach the pocket. So once you're happy with the placement, go ahead and pin it in place. And then we will edge stitch around three sides of the pocket to attach it. If you have an edge stitch foot, you can use that to get a nice even distance when you're stitching. Otherwise, just eyeball it and try to stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Now take this piece and fold it in half so that the short sides are meeting at the top. Then you'll pin along the sides. If you have quilting clips, that works a little bit better because of the thickness of the interfacing here. 
Next, you're gonna need to mark an area about four inches wide um, right here, um, and you're gonna leave that area unstitched. So um, ignore where I've marked here um, in purple, that's too low, um, and I had to go back and fix that later. So now you're going to stitch down one side to that first mark. So for you, it should just be about an inch, inch and a half, um, and then back stitch. Then you'll skip over that four inch section to the next part and stitch all the way down the rest of the side. Um, and again, we're using a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance throughout this whole project. Now stitch all the way down the other side with no gaps. Now we're going to create our boxed out corners. So grab one of your bottom corners and pull the front and back away from each other like this. And then you can kind of press open the seam allowance. You can um, finger press it or um, go ahead and press it with your iron. So you want the seam to be centered right in the center of this triangle here. And we're going to want to draw a line that is six inches long all the way across the corner. So the three inch mark should be right centered on the seam. The beginning of the ruler should be at one end right here. And then the other side should be at the six inch mark. So you're just gonna draw in your line using a water soluble marker and you can pin it in place if you need to. Now stitch across the corner right on top of the line that you drew. Then repeat all these steps with your other corner. Now trim off your corner about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch past your stitching line. Now we're going to work on the handles. So I am gonna place my two handle pieces right sides together and stitch along that bottom edge at 3 eighths of an inch. After stitching, I'll press the seam allowances open. I've also gone ahead and repeated those steps with my handle lining fabric. So it's stitched at 3 eighths and the seam allowance is pressed open. Now we're going to place the lining and the exterior handle fabric right sides together. Make sure you line up the ends and that center bottom seam. Pin everything together and then mark an area large enough to fit your hand in right along the center bottom area. Now leaving that area that we marked unstitched, you're gonna stitch all the way around the outside here at 3 eighths of an inch. So to get a sharp point, I am going to stop with my needle down in the fabric at about the pivot point, um, about 3 eighths of an inch from the end, and then I'll pivot so that I am perpendicular with the pivot point and I can do one stitch across the end, then I will continue in the other direction. points you're going to want to cut down the seam allowance to about an eighth of an inch to reduce the bulk and then turn the whole thing right side out and give it a press. You're going to need to poke out the corners with some sort of blunt pointy tool like a chopstick or a knitting needle. So after pressing and getting the edges nice and crisp I'm just edge stitching right along the gap that we left to close it up. Now we're going to draw a big X on the bottom of our handles. So lining up the three inch mark with the bottom seam, go ahead and make a mark at the zero and six inch mark. 
and do that on both sides. So we are making two marks that are six inches apart. And then once you have your four marks, you can draw your diagonal X's all the way through them. So it should look like this. So you're gonna take your outer rectangle piece and um, I've already marked where the center bottom is. Um, it's right along where the fold line was when you cut it. And you're gonna lay it so that it's right side facing up. Then take the handle piece and lay it so that it's also right side facing up on top. And we're gonna line up the center bottom seam with that center um, where the center fold line was and we're going to try to to evenly space this so in my project it ended up being about three inches and a quarter on each side above and, and below here so whatever works for you so that you get it right in the center then you'll place a bunch of pins to hold all of these layers together and we'll stitch right on top of that X that we have drawn. Now you're going to roll up your handles nice and tight and pin them in place. We want them to stay tucked away for the next few steps so they don't get caught in any of our stitching. Now we're going to repeat the steps that we did with our lining fabric. So you're going to fold up this piece so that the short ends go together and then you'll pin along the side edges. This time, however, you don't need to leave a gap. You can stitch all the way down both sides here. After you stitch the sides, we're gonna create box corners just like we did before. The only difference here is we have that handle fabric and we wanna make sure that doesn't get caught in our stitches. So you wanna try to, to mark a six inch line just as before, but if you have to do slightly less than that, like five and three quarters, for example, that's fine. It's better to not catch any of the handle fabric when you're drawing across the corner. You can also place some pins like I have here to keep all of that um, handle fabric out of the way while you're stitching. Now we get to assemble everything. So go ahead and um, take your lining bag and leave it so that it's wrong sides facing out and take your, um, your exterior bag and place it so that um, the, and take your exterior bag and turn it so that the right sides are facing out. And then you're gonna place it inside the lining lining up the side seams and you're just gonna pin all the way around the top of the bag, making sure that those um, seams are lined up and everything is right sides together. So if you're doing this right, your handle fabric should be still kind of um, rolled up and pinned and it will be sandwiched in between the lining layer and the exterior layer here. To sew around the top of the bag, I take off my accessory table so I can sew in the round and just stitch all the way around the top at 3 8 of an inch. Now reach into that gap that you left and pull everything out. So 
You're just gonna have to kind of wrestle it all out and then pull the lining so that it is right side out as well. So unfortunately I don't have footage of me installing these magnetic snaps, um, but you'll wanna make sure you do that before you close up the hole in your lining. So um, the way these work, they have these little prongs on them and they have a backer piece and you stick the prongs through your fabric and then on the back side you'll attach this backer piece um, so to figure out where I want to cut the holes in my fabric you just hold the backer piece in place and then you would just mark um, where you want to cut your holes and then either with some sharp scissors or a seam ripper you'll cut some very small little holes to fit your prongs through you'll push it into place. Then from the back side, attach your prongs and then you'll bend the legs flat. Um, so it should be really secure and um, your magnetic snaps will be able to close your bag. Now I'm gonna close up this hole. You could just kind of pin it together and edge stitch it, but a cleaner finish is to hand stitch it closed using a ladder stitch. So to start off my ladder stitch, I just do a couple stitches in place to secure my stitches. Then I'll go back and forth across this gap. So I'll do one parallel stitch with the fold, then go do a parallel stitch on the other side across the fold. So you see how it's kind of forming the rungs of a ladder as I stitch. And I'm keeping my stitches running right inside the fold line here. And when I pull tight, it will make those stitches virtually disappear. So it's a nice invisible way to close up a hole in a lining like this. So I'll do this all the way across. Then I will secure my stitches with some more back stitches, just a couple of stitches in place. Then I like to pass the needle um, to the inside of the project, um, inside the seam, and just um, pull it out somewhere else and cut the thread tail. So the last thing we need to do is secure our straps at the top of the bag. So just lift up your strap um, until it sits at the top and then pin it in place and do that with both straps. And we'll use that same ladder stitch to secure the straps from the inside. So we're going to be stitching the lining fabric from the inside of the bag to the lining fabric on the, along the handles. And here is the finished bag. So you can tie it and you can either tie it tightly or tie it just at the very end so you can drape it over your arm and it fits um, my lunch in it really well. I've been using it as my lunchbox since I've made it um, and I love having it. So I hope you were able to make this project as well and you get a lot of use out of it. Happy sewing! Thank you.